All right, welcome. I am Dan. Sitting to my right here is Nick. And I have Bob. Bob. And then I have Ben over here. Of we course. are at his brewery. Hi, Ben. Welcome. Uh, only child, so thank you for having us out. Of course. Only child in Gurney. And uh, in case you didn't know, this is uh, Chicago Brewery Geeks podcast. We are at number 10, episode 10. We tried to get one a month. That kind of fell short because I think we've hit a year about three weeks ago or so. <laughs> so, but close enough. That's Where's good. our banner, man? Usually we have a banner. So I forgot the banner. I threw everything in my car because we came here right after work. Um, <laughs> and I forgot the banner. We have the hop. Yeah, we have a hop. We got a hop cone and a cold banner. beer. That's our all banner has a hop on it, so, okay. so. It's, it's pseudo our banner. And Ben is the founder, co-founder, and this is the follower. Correct, yes, my wife and I are the founders. Uh, we founded the brewery back in 2013 and the head brewery as well. So I'm you primarily responsible for the recipes as well? Or is that 100%. Yeah. 100%, that's yeah. all you? Um, what, what was the inspiration then for starting the brewery and Only Child is the name? Are you? Are you oh, well, I'm an only child, right? yeah, so everything's about me. Uh, <laughs> inspiration for the brewery was really. Um, I kind of had to figure out a way to justify my obsession with beer to my wife. So I figured if we started a business based around beer, then you know she couldn't give me uh, too much crap for you know my my passion and my it, uh, you know before doing this, I was a very avid beer drinker, beer geek, so to speak, and I you know worked in the industry and was just in love with craft beer. And brewing beer though for others now is kind of a very unselfish. Thing to do, not Absolutely. Like being an only child. Absolutely. Well, it's you know that's just a stigma. It's you know the coolest thing is just being able to brew beer and share it with people and just see people reaction to it and when they love it and they order more or when my wife and I are out around town and you know we're at a bar that has our beer on draft and you know someone a couple seats down orders it like that still to me even after this many years is the coolest thing ever. And I just I love it. And where do you guys, do you guys distribute all around the whole Chicagoland area? Uh, we used to distribute a lot more. When we were based out in Northbrook, we packaged everything and drove it around in our cars and distributed it all over. But since we've moved to Gurney and opened the tap room, uh, we primarily sell a majority of our beer out of here. So we distribute in just a, to just a, like a handful of local clients. And we try and keep the beer as close to the brewery as possible. And what made you move? What's that? What made you move? Um, Northbrook, I was in a 700 square foot warehouse and it was essentially um, just a little bit larger than my kitchen that I used to home brew in. And um, we wanted to be able to open up to the public and get some sort of licensing to either have a bottle shop or like a small tasting room. And uh, that just never panned out in that space with both the landlord and uh, you know the government there. They just, it wasn't something that we were able to work out. and. We live in Lindenhurst, which is the next town over here from Gurney, so we just made a quality of life move. I mean, I'm three miles away from here. It's a 10-minute drive to work, so. And Gurney was very accommodating with the liquor license and... Gurney, open arms. They were great. Yeah, and I, heard, I grew up in this area, so I mean, I grew up one town over also in Grays Lake, so I mean, this is... So I had, I, uh, we're right across the street from Gurney Mills, and when I was 16, I worked at the Starbucks in Gurney Mills, so I mean, this is my old... Stop and I heard uh, I heard that most of your syndrome actually goes to Great America. Yep, that it does. We essentially <laughs> Which brew, is right next door, basically. We essentially brew that beer for them, yeah. And it's an awesome beer. It, out of a Session IPA, I was telling Bob before we got here, because I had it before, I'm like, for a Session IPA, syndrome has tons of flavor. Oh, I it appreciate is it, yeah. like an, an incredible Session IPA, especially for only 4.6. Is it 4.6? Yeah, 4.5. Yeah. Um, it's a very flavorable Session. A lot of Session IPAs, you see, they're kind of, they taste like watered down IPAs. So, sure. Not uh, to be honest. And Syndrome has whatever hop character or hops you're putting in there. Simcoe, Nugget, and Amarillo. It's got a really good, really good flavor up, up front for uh, some low alcohol that you can just sit around and drink easily. And those are the types of beers that we brew a lot of because that's really all I drink is low alcohol, <laughs> kind of crushable kind of beer. Well, you so. can drink more. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, you, quantity, you, quantity. You do have quite a few uh, higher ABVs. And I that know. we do. We were talking about one of uh, one of the ones that we we brought. I think one of the first first canning of the, the Buddy Ryan. Yep. 
be, be popular, excellent double right IPA. A lot of people uh, were upset we didn't get to can that this year. So was that was. That, uh, doo -doo 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 we had some. We had to push back our production uh, about six weeks. So we kind of had, to, and because we go through a mobile canning company, yeah. we rely on their schedule as well. And. Um, we just weren't, it wasn't in the cards. We, if there was one thing that had to be cut, it was that. And that's that I think that's that was my introduction to you guys, really, was because um, I lived in Rock Beach. I grew okay. up in Mother Line, so I'm, okay. I'm very familiar with this area as well. Sure. Uh, but Antioch Liquors, I was at Antioch Liquors last yeah. year just grabbing some local beers that we could take off the dark and stay at Surly in Minneapolis. Okay. So, and the can, the Buddy Ryan, the can, the name, and being yep. a, an IPA and a Rye IPA at that, I'm like, I'll give this a shot. Sure. Grab that. Um, so we had that at Darkness Day and, and everything, and, it, and that's good. That was. The name was good in the Yeah, place. where I first yeah. heard of you guys. And then I hadn't had a chance to really pick up any of your stuff until maybe three, four months ago. A buddy of mine was having a party, and he's a Miller Lite guy. And I was just like, no. I like him, I like him already. Yeah, I'm like, I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, hey, I'm like, I need to bring some other beers to this party. Okay. And I'm like, the closest brewery to my house that I'm really aware of. I mean, there's a couple closer. I think I think Grays Lake has one. But I'm like, I'll go to Woodland Child. I haven't been there. Let me sure. check them out. So I came here and grabbed a couple hollers, and uh, I brought actually the Syndrome was the nice. one I grabbed. And then you had just released the Question Authority. Okay. Which I thought was a really solid, great stop. Um, Appreciate it. Yeah. So we grabbed, I grabbed some of those, and then I had my own party. With, just a couple weeks back, and I stopped in again and got a couple more hours and it filled nice. up, you know. So, nice. um, you know, it's, it's nice to have a brewery right, right down, basically ten minutes from my house. That it is, you know. So, just, and that has good beer. At least. Sure. Um, Appreciate. I still it. haven't checked out the other one closer to me, so I think it's Light the Lamp. I don't know. Yeah, we just did a collaboration with Light the Lamp. Actually, uh, we brewed. Uh, we're calling it a cold weather Kolsch, and okay. uh, it's called Hockey Mom. Um, just because they're a hockey themed mm -hmm. brewery and only child, you know, we thought Hockey Mom went well. But uh, we're canning that on October 2nd, and that will be released uh, the following weekend, you know, just in time for hockey season. And yeah, I did, I did manage, I didn't get a chance to go to their booth, but I know I just went to the Racing Brewfest, Great Lakes Brewfest. Oh, okay, gotcha. Were you guys at that? We yeah. weren't, no, because they, it, Gurney uh, keeps scheduling the Gurney Fest the same day okay, yeah, that's right. as it was the Racine one. one. So we kind of... Yeah, I really there. like the Racine one. The Racine one's awesome. If that's you guys get a chance says. to go, um, it is a great festival, Racine Zoo. Unfortunately, they don't let the monkeys out and the animals aren't roaming around, but it is a great festival, very spread out, awesome location, a lot of great beers, a lot of great breweries, a lot of Wisconsin breweries that are even further north in Wisconsin that I had never even heard of, Sure, don't get a chance to go to. But then I was really surprised, too, because it did have, like, you know, I figured, like, Light the Lamp, you know, northern Illinois places, but then also, like, Noon Whistle was there, um, other places way further south. I, I was very impressed that they had a variety of, like, space of breweries. It's awesome. Yeah. yeah, we're gonna try and get there next year. Yeah, definitely. So you guys, what is a cold weather culture? How does it refer from regular It it's not an actual you're not gonna find that on any sort of judging panel style <laughs> guidelines, but it's basically we took a very traditional cologne style Kolsch recipe, which is our base malt was 50-50 between Vienna and Pilsen, a uh, little bit of carapils to help with that big frothy uh, head retention, and then we added just a little bit of chocolate malt to give it some unique character and a little bit of color. So that's it's not chocolate malt would not normally ever be used in that style of beer, but I like doing things that aren't normal. And so when is that going to be released? We're canning it. We're canning it on October second, and then it's released, I believe, on uh, Friday the sixth. I had to look at my tap room manager and make sure I'm right. I don't. <laughs> I can't keep track of all that stuff. So one of the beers you have on tap right now is the Barrel Aged Monster Under the Bed, correct? Which was great as well. Um, do you do a lot of barrel aged, a lot of specialties, or? Well, that Monster Under the Bed, uh, the barrel aged version, is released every year for our. So we released it for our first year anniversary, which was August of 2016, and then we released it again this past August for our second year anniversary. So that beer will be an annual release every year on our, basically for our birthday okay. uh, here in Gurney. Um, a lot of the barrel aged stuff that we do, once we use a barrel for the first time, I like to do like a big stout or something like that, but then second use, we turn them into fermenters for sours. So I have, I have eight bourbon barrels and two uh, Pinot Noir barrels back there, all of which are now sour fermenters. So 
I know the, Bob's a big sour fan. Yep. I'm a huge sour fan. Looking forward to those. I didn't notice any sours. Have you done that before? Is this we, oh no, we've had sours since we opened here and we can't, the reason they're very, they're flighty. I mean, the second we put them on, they go. They're very, very popular, so yeah. we can't keep them on the menu. There was one on tap one of the times I was here recently. Yeah. I didn't get a chance to try it, though. Yeah, but it was it was on tap along with the uh, barrel age under the bed. So you do bottle releases, though, I know. With, so Monsters Under the Bed being the anniversary one, you do other ones throughout the year, throughout the barrel age as, series. How as much as possible, yeah. Quarterly, or is there any... There's no rhyme or re there's no rhyme or reason. I mean, once you put the beer in or the beer in the barrel, you know it it tells you when it's ready. So that's you know when it's ready, we get it out of the barrel, package it, and release it. So speaking so, of barrel aged beers, um, I know we have Fobab coming up. Tickets sure. are still available um, if you guys haven't got your tickets yet. Are you guys do you guys have any entries in Fobab? We will be there. Yep, and they uh, they limited the brewery's entries this year to two, so we're gonna we're gonna have two beers there. Excellent. Can you tell us what, or is that still a secret? Still a secret. Okay. <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, um, I'll I know, be there. So I'll I know one of them um, will be our most popular beer, hands down, and it's the Rouge, and that's a sour red ale that we ferment in a Pinot Noir barrel with the uh, Britannomyces strain from Dree Fontaine in Belgium. Um, and it ferments for about nine months, and that beer is, I mean, out of any of our beers, uh, not just sours, not just barrel aged stuff. That's easily our number one selling, number one draw, most popular beer we do. So uh, it wasn't ready in time for Fobab last year. It will be ready. It's ready now. So you went to Fobab last year. I went to Fobab last year. It's my my favorite event of the year. Oh, yeah, if you're a big sour guy. For sure. <laughs> Unfortunately, I'm at a destination wedding. This I'm going to be missing this year's. But uh, are you going to Fobab this year, Nick? I mean, I'm I'm a last minute guy. We'll uh, see. I don't. I don't have any plans. Yeah. <laughs> he's he's already got his tickets. <laughs> I mean, his Nick will be there. I uh, I'll be there for the uh, second session on Saturday, so the last session. That's when we'll be there. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, only child will obviously be there. You know, repped. But uh, when we go on Saturday. Yeah. That's that's a, you know I know a lot of a lot of guys like to go on Friday and kind of scope yeah. everything out beforehand. But yeah. I figure my personal opinion, the second session Saturday. That's when nobody wants to really bring anything back. So, yep. <laughs> Plus, I usually go out in Chicago. I, I live in the Burbs, so I'm out in Chicago every weekend. So, yep. go to Fobab and then go somewhere else to drink. We went to <laughs> we went to Girl and the Goat for dinner last year after Fobab, with no reservations. We just went there and just took a crack at it, and we stood at the bar and waited for about an hour and 45 minutes. But then we got a table and had the best meal of our life. Did so, you get, nice. did you get the duck tongues? I didn't get duck tongues. No, I got a crispy pork shank though. That just. <laughs> That was unreal. Incredible, incredible. Yeah. Hey, yeah, really. I think I'm the only person here that hasn't been there. Nick's been there. Yeah. I've been to Duck Duck Goat and I've been to Little Goat. Oh. I've not been to Big Goat yet. Okay. <laughs> it's worth it. D Dan only uh, eats fried food that's brown. So. Yes, and no rabbit food. So if it's got anything green in it, uh, rabbit food's out of the question. Sorry, you've given me my food's food. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Ben, how'd you guys find a mobile canning company? And is it like it sounds? Do they literally just show up and, and start canning? Yeah, so it's it's Midwest Mobile Canning, and they do a ton of breweries in this area. I think they do everywhere from Wisconsin, Illinois, Minnesota, and Indiana. Um, but yeah, I just kind of started asking around within the industry. Um, I forgot who was using them prior to me, to, uh, pointing me in their direction. But it's great. They come with a truck. And I mean, they have a wild goose canning line on wheels in their truck and they lower it on a lift gate and bring it in. Uh, you know, we supervise, they go over everything, they sanitize it, hook it up to your bright tank, can your product and, you know, in and out. They print your labels for you now too? On there, go on there? Cause it's like a wrap around. We order the cans through them prior and they go through their print company and then the cans are delivered to us. So we always can on a Monday. The cans are delivered to us on the Friday prior and they come with the label shrink wrapped on them already. Nice. Yep, and they're just ready to fill. That's wild. I didn't know that was a thing. Did you? Yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's, it. it's a big thing. Well, I mean, you know, obviously long term, if you have your own canning line, you have your own equipment, you're going to save money long term per, per can that you're filling. 
but you know, buying a canning line is a large investment. Yeah. So, and, and we you know, are, I don't know if I'm sure it's changed since there's so many more breweries, but it was like five years ago, whatever. We brewed a beer, co brewed a beer with Wild Onion, and sure. we we're talking to them because they were at the time they were one of the only ones doing cans, yeah. Um, and they they showed us, they're like, this is we have to order half a semi load full of cans, yeah. just yeah. Of one That's can, it. and so even with them, just you know, pushing out cans, that still was, you know, it took them quite a while yep. to use up all those cans. So it's a heavy upfront investment. Yeah, and they won the lotto. So the yeah, exactly. they were able to exactly. do that. Twice. <laughs> Twice. <laughs> I know they won it that one time. That's how the brewery got made. <laughs> Even Revolution, I would say now they are exclusively switching the cans. Um, took them however many years to do, but it is, it's a, and man, they've been canning a lot of the regular offerings. So. Yeah. It's a big so, investment. Yeah. yeah. Now, Ben, this isn't your first brewing role, right? You had some other stops prior to opening uh, Only Child? I was, so I was an avid home brewer uh, for the better part of a decade, but um, I, I worked in the industry. I worked in Chicago and I was a beverage director. So I worked at a, at a crafty little pub on the north side. We had, you know, 200 different bourbons, scotches, whiskeys, and we had well over 200 uh, beers on the menu. And I was the curator of the beer menu and kind of the bar manager there. Um, so I got to really kind of witness a lot of this hyper-local growth in the craft beer industry. Uh, the guys from Beguile in the city, uh, their very first invoice number one was to my bar and we had a keg tapping party for them when they first hit the market. Um, I ended up, you know, kind of going like brewing like a, one of, an interpretation of one of my homebrew recipes with Matt from Beguile and we released it at a festival at the Donk House uh, on the north side. And it was just, I was just very immersed in the whole culture and uh, that was really kind of that job and then that experience with Beguile was really the catalyst that was like, all right, let's do this. And it was really cool. So having the bourbon whiskey background, is there certain barrels that you look for now? Uh, free ones. Um. <laughs> <laughs> but, well, the, mon the monster side of the bed this year was the Old Bell Iron Tea, I believe. Correct. Um, the next bourbon barrel uh, stout that we will be releasing is Question Authority. Actually, we have that in a Blanton's bourbon barrel. Oh, yeah, wow. that's going to be good. Bob, <laughs> that's going to be is, good. Bob is almost to that point where, like, if it doesn't come in a bourbon barrel, it's not worth drinking. Yeah. <laughs> what would what, you describe that bar may look a lot like my basement? But, <laughs> <laughs> you know, what is one of the ones that turned me on bourbon? But, yep. you, you know, the better the bourbon, the better the barrel is here. Undoubtedly. Yeah. How long do you like to keep your uh, your stouts in the barrel? It, it, it honestly depends. Um, we've kept them as little as six months yeah. and as long as 14, 15 months. Um, you know, after about three months, we'll drive a nail in the barrel and we'll start taking samples pretty yeah. much regularly um, and try not to drink all the liquid in the barrel while we're doing it. <laughs> but we just take it out when it's ready when the taste is what we intend and you know we're trying not to get any tannins in there and all that so it depends it really depends on the beer right on what uh what inspires you to to make different recipes like what what's usually your inspiration to come up with hey i want to make this kind of beer or that kind of beer uh that i can draw inspiration from anywhere from my <laughs> wife who's over there pointing at herself right now from my my kids um seasonal changes weather uh and we're brewing a beer right now that was in retirement that I'm bringing back called Imaginary Friend. It's a black ale. I haven't brewed it since Northbrook, but, uh, you know, we thought, hey, it's end of September, going into October, it's going to start being chilly. Little did we know it's 90 degrees today and we're all sitting here sweating. <laughs> but, um, you know, it, it can be something as little as that, just, you know, seasonal or get start getting a lot of requests in the tap room for a certain style of beer. So Yeah, I'll request right now. I want a wet hot you want a wet hop ale? Yeah. Uh, okay, next year that'll definitely happen. I have I have ten hop plants that I grow on the side of my house. Um, last year was our first year of yield, and we got about a pound and a half. And this year we got almost seven pounds. So next year I should hopefully get enough to do a small batch of a wet hop ale. I love wet hop ales, and there's there's not enough of them out. There. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, it's always good to see a brewery come up. I was actually thinking about doing like a wet hop saison, doing something like different. Yeah, I do too. 
nice and dry. That's a, that's a different concept, yeah. Wet, tanky hops, play with it well. People so, don't have. Is Mason your friend just coming back as a one-time? Because it seems like that is something an only child needs. It's coming, it's coming back <laughs> because it's my favorite all-time name that yeah. we've ever, out of the hundred different beers we've done, it is hands down my favorite name. That's so it's like, I gotta, yeah. I gotta redo it. So, you know, we tweak the recipe a little bit and we're brewing it, you know, when we were in Northbrook, it, it, it was a much smaller, much different operation. So, you know, we got some big boy equipment here now. So I'm, I'm excited to bring a beer back and brew it here on the scale that we're doing now. So, yeah. Excellent. And we're using a new hop that I've never used because it's a hoppy black ale. Dry. We essentially brew it like we would brew any of our IPAs, but there's a bunch of midnight wheat malt in it to make it jet black. But uh, I scored a, a, a new hop out of Australia called Vic Secret. It's not okay. entirely new, but it's it's one of the newer ones. That one of the on. newer ones. It's super high alpha acid and just super just dank and sticky, and I think it'll play well with those dark malts. So. The hop of choice at the Old Park Microbrew Review this year. Every year they pick one style, and yeah. this year was the Big Secret Pellet. Was it nice? Yeah. Nice. Yeah, I know. Is that is that what uh, I'm assuming based on the name? That's what Microphone probably uses in their secret sauce. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't even think about it. I don't know what. Do a special sauce? Or is it called Vic Special Sauce? Don't they have no, they, they do like a Zach Special Sauce. They do I thought they had a Vic Special Sauce. Yeah. I could be wrong. Well, yeah. if they do a beer called Vic Secret Sauce, that's <laughs> probably, I, probably I would, what it is. Yes, that's the hop. Maybe. I could be wrong. They, I might have just thought they'd yeah. like that. They do so many IPAs over there. <laughs> it's kind of crazy. So what do you have? Uh, I noticed also on, um, besides the beer menu, there was like an upcoming thing. Like, Tap room shenanigans. Yeah, what, what yeah. kind of things do you have coming up? Uh, you know, so I know. We do. Yeah. I mean, we do chili cook-offs on Sundays during football games in the tap room. We have live music. Uh, we have a couple, pretty much resident bands that like Kai Anderson and the Pickups and Green Noise, and they just they come here and rock, and it's awesome. Um, and also, you know, a couple beer releases. We have the uh, the Kolsch, the, our very first collab that we're putting into cans with Light the Lamps coming up in October. We're doing a a big like art show uh, that my tap room manager Charlotte is hosting on, on Friday the 13th. Uh, and then probably the most exciting event, at least that I'm amped up for, is Halloween. We do our most popular beer, hands down, um, that we put out in cans that people kind of seek and actually gets traded is Don't Tell Mom the Baby Citra's Dead. It's an all Citra Hop double IPA. Um, but for Halloween this year, we're doing a version of it, which we did on draft last year with blood orange. So, and we're actually gonna can it. The cans are all black and orange, and it's a blood orange oh, version nice. of that beer, and it's really, really good, so. Let's come off of that. I think Friday the 13th is like in October this yeah. year, right? It's October, yeah, it's October, Friday the cool. 13th, yeah. Hey, and Halloween man. a couple weeks later. Yeah. Um, I noticed at the bar that you guys were at Border Wars. Yeah. It's the uh, it's one of the Brewfest partners events. The same guys that threw the party at Racine, at the yeah. Racine Zoo. Yep. How was your experience? And uh, talk about like what, what you guys won, man. I saw I saw a, tri a trophy up there. It was so I didn't get to I wasn't at the festival. Um, again, that's Charlotte, my tap room manager. She's such a rock star. She does a lot of that stuff because Amanda and I have we have four kids, eight and under, as well as running the business. So it's you know. I coach their soccer teams, and so a lot of things on the weekends are kid-focused, so I don't get to get to all the fests and have fun like I used to. Um, however, my feedback, or the feedback that I got from the fest was that it was awesome, it was really well ran, a lot of people had fun, and then we actually won best brewery and best beer, like it's best showing ass. with Question Authority, which is that, that stout with the yeah. Himalayan yeah. pink salt. Really right good, on. solid it's stout for sure. such an honor, I mean, it was so cool. Um, you know, and it was done by people like voting at the festival while they were tasting beers. You know, they had this app and were able to vote, and it was. That's really cool. That's really cool. The yeah. people's choice. Yeah, <laughs> I dig it. That, that that is cool. Right on. Yeah, that's cool. So I have another question. Like, I noticed your your artwork on the wall is like, like patents for Batman's suit and the ad ad. Yeah. Where do those come from? <laughs> those are awesome. Again, uh, <laughs> Batman. People ask who your favorite superhero is. I always say Batman is the only superhero. And I'm just <laughs> kind of kidding around. But he was always, I always loved uh, Batman as a kid growing up. And I am a huge Star Wars nerd. And I have gotten my kids into Star Wars just as much as, as myself. And it's so, 
everything in my son's room is Star Wars and Kylo Ren, and everything in my daughter's room is Ray and Stormtroopers. It's it's heaven. It's awesome. So, is there any what? Star Wars themed beers in the past or in the future? Oh yeah, we do every summer. Um, we can a beer called Together We'll Rule the Galaxy, and it's an all galaxy hopped. It's a uh, it's a wheat. We call it a wheat IPA just because it's. A, it's an IPA, it's not a wheat beer, yeah. but uh, it's an IPA with a heavy wheat uh, grain bill. Okay. But yeah, we do, uh, you know, we tiptoe around copyrights as much as we can yeah. with Lucasfilm, <laughs> so we uh, try. But you know, the posters, when we were decorating the tap room, just trying to, you know, asking my wife for advice, she's really big into design, you know, like, I want to put art, like framed pictures up, what do I, she goes, well, you know, you're the only child and this brewery is, your passion is a reflection of you. Put stuff up that you like. Yeah. yeah. Man, you didn't have to. Job. Didn't have to. Yeah. Didn't have <laughs> Those to are really my cool. arm. Yeah. Those are like. Well, I mean, besides the big mural of the logo and it's yeah. a beer on the wall. Yeah. The first time I came here, that was the first thing I saw. I turned around when I was at the bar, and I saw like the the pseudo patents. Yeah. And I'm like. Batman's cowl and the ad ad. I'm like those. I mean, there's a couple others out there too. I can't remember what they are, but I know those two like caught my eye immediately. Yep. Because I'm also a huge Batman fan as well as Star Wars. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, it was you know, unique too. I haven't seen those before. Yeah. So I'm like, I'm like, it took me a while to find them online, but yeah. I found them. So with your wife being a designer, does she do some of the labels? Does she has she done the artwork on the walls? Or where? No, she like she's she's really into interior design and decorating and things like that. Um, all of a guy named Chris Tankowitz, who I actually met locally at a beer fest, um, both of us kind of three sheets to the wind, uh, just met and started talking about artwork. And he gave me his card, and I emailed him. And when he asked kind of what style I wanted to go with for our artwork, and I said I want to cross between Calvin and Hobbes and Batman with the with the style, like kind of comic book like, but cartoonish enough to be like kid friendly and cool and. Uh, he does a great job. And then that silhouette picture is a, if you're a child of the 80s, chances are you had that done in school, and I did. And me. Well, you can't see the silhouette uh, from our podcast, but if you, I posted pictures about a month ago on our Facebook page. Check them out. That was the first time I stopped in here and grabbed some hollers. It's th- um, it's I took a picture of that wall. And it's really <laughs> cool looking. Yeah. Um, there's a big hop behind us, as you can see. Uh, it's just cool. It's a cool small brewery, I think. Um, the bar is the bar itself is, is very small, but you do have the area we're sitting at right here, which is the table, big table here, another big table behind the camera, a couple tables on the side. Is that like uh, it's not what, what do they call that uh, like shuffleboard or whatever? Yeah, it's a shuffleboard table. Shuffleboard yep. table over there you can play. Cool place to come hang out. It's it's the Google Maps is accurate. Um, it's just once you get in this little complex, it's kind of hard, but you can see the, the yeah. window. So it took me right here. It's my first yeah. time here, and Dan even mentioned small. I would very hesitate. I would hesitate to call it small. They do events here. There's plenty of room. Oh, there's room. No, uh, you can throw a proper yeah. party. And there's big yeah, the area up front. The area we're sitting at is is kind of what we do for private parties. Like we're actually in a couple weekends, we have the whole place rented out for a wedding reception, which is really cool. Okay. And like this this area is nice because. There's no speakers and no TVs. So yeah. even on like Fridays and Saturdays when it gets really loud or on Sundays if we have the football game on at the bar, um, this area is very family friendly, you know, and it's very, it's just quiet, it's more conducive to just having a conversation. Yeah, and I noticed when I, when I showed up here today, sitting outside, there's a couple picnic tables. So during warmer weather, you got the picnic tables out there. Yeah. There was uh, a couple people drinking some beers and they had their kid with them and eating some pizza that they got. Yep. Um, from a, they don't, you don't have food here, but you do have some menus I saw, so you yeah. can order food or uh, get it wherever you want and you know, bring it with you. Plenty yeah, of food. there's plenty yeah. of stuff around here. And so, you know, kid friendly as well. Um, a lot of a lot of dogs and kids on Saturdays and Sundays yeah. during the day. It's and what, what's your capacity here, like 100 or something? It's, yeah, it's about, I mean, we can, it's a 4,000 square foot facility with, a, you know, it's basically divided in half, about 2,000 square feet for the production area and then 2,000 square feet for the yeah. tap room. So, so it's a good size. Yeah. You know, come out, bring, bring your friends. Um, it's up here in, in Gurney, right across from Gurney Mills, near Great America. If you're coming up for Great America, there's no reason not to stop out here and have some yeah. beers afterwards. Or before. Um, or before. Try the syndrome when you're at Great America. Exactly. Yeah. If you have the beers before the roller coasters, try not to have too many. Yes, that, that could be a bad thing. Might day. not go well. Yeah, but yeah, it's <laughs> it's a it's a great brewery up here. 
Um, I appreciate it. Yeah, I, I, I really like it. I haven't had a chance to come here and just hang out. Yeah, well, you're welcome to stopped, anytime. Grabbed a couple of hollers, you know, brought them back. But I've done that a couple times, you know, myself. So, well, um, always peek your head in the back and see if we're here brewing or something when you stop by and say hi. So definitely. So yeah, definitely come out and. Uh, and I don't know, we usually talk about what else is coming up that we know about. Um, Phobab is the biggest thing I know about coming up. Um, Darkness Day, myself and Bob and about six other people are going to Darkness Day. We're taking a road trip up there. We do about every year. When is that? Uh, that is October 20th. Okay. Yeah. Somewhere around there. 21st or 20th. Yeah, so it's, it's a really cool week. We camp out overnight, essentially, and there's a big beer trade. Beer, not trade, but beer share, more or less. Uh, great thing. So if you're up in uh, Minneapolis for Darkness Day, if you see myself or Bob, um, say hi. Well, locally, though, uh, it's the Goose Island Black Party this weekend. It's Swansea Day at West Lake, uh, West Lake yeah. Beer Lakers. Nick knows what's going on. Nick's and, the, uh, and the Brooklyn Beer Mansion is a two-day fest this weekend as well. Yeah, so exactly. that's going to be in West Loop. They'll have like five guest taps, and they, they're taking over uh, a mansion in uh, West Loop. It's a major weekend for beer. Yeah, yeah a lot of stuff uh, going on. Swansea Day is the, uh, that's all the cans are. Yeah. Yeah. We're actually, we are doing, uh, on December 2nd and 3rd, we are going to be uh, participating in Billy's Craft Beer Fest, um, which is in Antwerp, Belgium. Uh -huh. And uh, this is our first international craft beer fest. Uh, so my wife and I are flying into Brussels uh, a couple days prior so we can do Dre Fontaine and Cantillon. And That's really cool. Yeah, I'm, I'm very pumped about that. <laughs> it's going to be fun. Yeah, and, and speaking of like... Over, uh, you know, import Oktoberfest. Obviously, October is coming up. Yeah, a lot of Oktoberfests uh, have already started. Cruz, Cruz Blanca, and West Loop. Their Oktoberfest is this weekend as well. Is it? Yeah. So yeah, and uh, I do want to remind you guys to check out our Facebook app, uh, our Facebook, our Twitter, our Instagram, everything. Uh, we do have an iPhone app, so if you got one of these iPhones, unfortunately, if you're an Android person. Our developer, he's a little biased against Androids, <laughs> but our iPhone app. Um, Hi, Eric. Some of the things are kind of wacky right now with iOS 11 coming out yesterday, but he's fixing those, and he's not going to take two years to fix them. So, uh, iPhone app, we've been keeping that up to date. We've been putting things in there, and uh, now as a banner, like we usually post our latest podcast too. So you see this. Exactly. If you have an event you want us to add, reach out to us on Facebook, on Twitter. Nick's always answering the Twitter. We have what over almost 11,000 followers on Twitter. Yeah, now? we're approaching 12k. Over 12,000 followers on Twitter. So keep telling Dang. your friends and, and help us out there. Facebook, we're around 4,000, I think. I, I can't remember what nice. Facebook is. Um, but yeah, so on Instagram, Instagram's always lacking because we're kind of lazy ways. Forget we have it. But we use it when we can. So. Yeah, brush up your Insta game, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was me. Nice. That was me. So I did. I did post something on Instagram. I don't have the password. Yeah, Nick doesn't have the password, even though I think just I probably gotta, told it to just him. Just got to hashtag the hell out of everything. Yeah, so, and uh, <laughs> check all our social medias. Watch us on YouTube. Hopefully you're watching this video on YouTube, because I think it's just, I think video's better. But otherwise, we do post it on the podcast service on uh, iTunes, and it spreads out a bunch of other places as well. You can just listen to us, so. And most importantly, check out Only Child. Exactly. We're here. Definitely come out there. Come drink great beer. beers. I am out of beer, so I do need another one. And I actually even drank uh, drink one of Bob's. So Double, we're going to check out some more Double beers. Dog, uh, yeah. Double Dog Dare. I had that when I first got here. That is incredible. Um, it's an IPA, People, double IPA with honey. Yeah. Local honey. It's all mosaic. That was not too. here last time I was here, so it just came out recently, I guess. Yeah. That's an awesome IPA, so you should come out here before that's gone and have some of that. So. Don't wait for the triple dog. Yeah, don't <laughs> wait for that. <laughs> Well, another that, brewery already does a triple dog, so we've already been told about that. So <laughs> it's always good to, to Google anything you're going to do yep, and see yep. if it's already out there. So, other than that, I will say thanks for checking us out. Come to Only Child, and I'll guys, cheers thanks for with having no beers. Me. <laughs> thanks for having us out. <laughs> Appreciate it. All right.